Hello everybody and welcome back to Showverse. My name is Haley Morales and today we're going to be talking about Miracle Workers Season 1. But before that, it is our charity month. We are, all donations this month go to the Innocence Project, which do absolutely amazing work all over the country. Uh, they have more information in our bio. We have the link to donate in our bio. This is a great cause, so please consider donating. Also, sign up for all of our things. Subscribe, go to our website and sign up for our newsletter so you can hear more about this stuff. We will also be announcing how much uh, in total donations we have in the newsletter. So go check that out. Uh, otherwise, let's get started on Miracle Workers Season 1. I saw the advertising for this uh, show and I was like, all it had to say was Steve Buscemi is God and I was ready for it. I was like, hell yes, please. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe is a shut-in angel in the uh, answered prayers department. But then it aired on a channel that I didn't have access to so I never got to watch it. Uh, but now I have access to HBO Max, and that's where I found it. And it was just as good as I thought it was going to be. It, it's, it's very good. Uh, we start off seeing this angel who has been working in dirt for a while, and they're, you know, looking for something else to do. They're not a fan of dirt anymore. So she goes to, like, the HR, more or less, and asks to be reassigned. Uh, they said there's an answered prayers department. That, you know, prayers come in, you answer them, move on. And so she's like, that is where I think I can absolutely make a change, make a difference. This is what I wanted to do. Hell yeah, get me down there. Uh, so she gets transferred to answered prayers. Uh, she goes down. There is one other person in the department. It's in the basement, like, real deep. Like, it's dark and dingy when she's walking in and goes in and it's, uh, literally one dude sitting at his desk uh like blanket over top of his head headphones on and he's playing he's got like a, a joystick controller and some buttons he's just really focused and um she's like oh okay uh he scares him and he jumps up and he's like oh sorry i just haven't seen anyone down here in a while and she asks what he's doing and he is uh currently moving leaves to help someone find their glove because they have prayed please let me find my glove uh and she's very unimpressed with the whole thing uh and while she's there they also get incoming prayers which oh, they open up this big wall that turns out like the whole thing is window into a room of just papers coming down just so many little prayer tickets and he goes with a net and he grabs a handful of them and he's like I got and he goes and starts doing working on that and she's like is there not other things we could work on and he's like oh no 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 those are complicated like he she grabs one and he's like mm mm not gonna happen that is what we call impossible and she's like what it, what are you doing he's, he's like well don't worry those ones get stamped and send up to the big guy to God himself. And she's like, oh, hell yeah, man. At least, you know, something's still happening. We, you know, see the big guy, Steve Buscemi. He has long hair, kind of ratty looking sweater, watching TV. And he's like, I hate, oh God, everything's going so bad. And he like finds like random channel. It's just uh, a NASCAR dude who's like thanking God for his win. He's like, oh, hell yeah, that's what I want. And then it turns out it was a news thing. He was like, that was, he said before he all, they all died. Yeah. So he's not having a great time. It was like, assistant comes in and is like, come on, why don't we do something? And he's like, mm, getting kind of tired of this whole earth thing. Uh, and some shenanigans occur that make God decide that he's going to, you know, cancel earth. He's going to explode it. And maybe he'll, he'll, he's moving on to something else. Current idea uh, is a restaurant called the Lazy Susan, where you sit in a lazy river 
and in the middle there's food that you grab with like like those little extendy arms that you people use to grab like shelves and stuff that are a little too high use that to grab a bunch of different kinds of food and you eat in your inner tube in a lazy river which is an idea for sure I think there's some kinks to work out but you know he's very excited about it um, the new angel is like you can't do this, this is, no 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 why don't you let me do one of these impossible prayers and if I can make it work then you don't destroy the earth and he's like fine and if you don't make make it work uh she's like yeah I know you just said that he's like no 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 you have to eat a worm in front of everybody you would be like mm, mm, this is such a good worm it's amazing so if she loses the world is destroyed and she has to eat a worm or if she wins, the world uh, continues on. <laughs> um, he lets her pick from the box of impossible prayers that are in his inbox at the moment. And she finds a double prayer. That's uh, two people both say, please let this work or let this happen, I think. So, um, which is just vague enough that they decide... Uh, no, they're like, well, did you fall in love? No. God is really, they have to have full intercourse uh, in like two weeks in order to, for it to be a win. But they talk him down to just a first kiss. They just have to kiss. Um, and that's her job. She has to get them to kiss in like two weeks. They're both incredibly shy people. Um... And there's also a running gag, which does get, if I'm being honest, a little bit old towards the end of the season, where pretty much any time they try to help, somebody dies. Like, it just so catastrophically bad that, like, people are dying, and, like, there's a news person, newscaster that ends, like, every episode, and he starts to be like, you know what? I have to take a vacation. News is just too sad. Which, it's funny at first. It does continue on for a bit too long for me. Uh... It's just like, oh, yeah, every decision they make is going to lead to a bunch of death. Uh, okay, I'm just I'm just expecting that now. Like, she tries to answer somebody's call for rain to get, uh, water their fields, and she ends up causing a uh, hurricane out of season in a place that's not prepared for it, so a bunch of people die and stuff. It's funny at first. It's like, oh, fuck, yeah, those little tiny things really, you know, add up but when every episode kind of ends with that same joke it gets a little old but it's okay it's funny and it's good so uh and we also continue on so uh daniel radcliffe is also in this and he plays uh an angel who's already in the department and he's like also a very shy anxious person and so he, she keeps coming up with these really big ideas and he keeps pulling her back which usually is for the best and then god's assistant is like i in this high level of an angel i should not be getting this man's alcoholic slurpees or whatever like why am i doing this job i am i'm an adult god damn it and uh he does this little like fluff piece with a magazine about how much he's grown because it turns out he is actually from the answered prayers department and as soon as uh the girl well, the main protagonist realizes this she's like i gotta get him to help uh, and she's able to get him to help to, to initially he's like fuck it you know the world sucks but she convinces him that this would be the ultimate answered prayer like this is a big thing you because he's been talking about how he hasn't done anything since his last answered prayer that got him promoted to working directly with god so like this would be a thing he could do um which gets him to help and while they're working together we find out that all angels are actually like people on earth who've died so all of them have had a life um 
and their like last names actually match up with their their lives. The main uh, the main girl, her name is uh, Eliza. Her last name is actually Eliza Hunter, and in her time she was like a Viking hunter. Uh, and th- she's like looking at her past on uh, one of the screens, and she's like, "Oh my God, why did I think that skirt was like ever in fashion? It's like a pelt of a person she killed and stuff." She's like, "Oh, oh my God, that's so embarrassing." And the higher up angel who used to work and answered prayers and now works directly with God, his name is Sunjay Prince, and he was a prince. <laughs> um, and that, uh, they, like, looking at his past, and he's like, "Oh my God, how embarrassing." that I, you know, had this happen and stuff. Life on Earth was so embarrassing. And then we look at Craig, which is Daniel Radcliffe's character, the shy uh, angel. He's like, Craig, what was your life like? And he's like, oh, that's that's fine. You don't have to. No, 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 no. It's totally embarrassing. I I don't even think it's on there. Yeah, you can't even find it. He pulled it up. He was a caveman. His last name is Bog. Uh, he was tasked in his group to watch the bog for the bog monsters. And he realizes at that moment while explaining that uh, maybe the bog monsters didn't exist. And he just spent all that time doing nothing. So it's a little sad, you know? A little, oh my god. But, which, oh, he's just a little sweetheart. He's doing his best. He really helps try to, like, rein them in because, like, they want to do this really big spectacles. And he's like, these are very shy people. Please stop. They get it, them to go to, like, a basketball game. They're like, the kiss cam. It's going to fucking work. He's like, these people are so shy. Why, wh- why would you do that? And also, it's like, you know, it's not even a guarantee that they're going to make it onto the kiss cam. You know, that's not... So the other two, Sanjay and Eliza, make it so every single other person who's like a couple going has for some reason something comes up where like the tickets go missing or they get sick. Um, just all these different things so they don't go. And so, so uh, these two are the... So the two they've chosen, uh, Sam and Laura, the, the humans' names... They're the only couple there, and they get on the kiss cam, and they're like, come on, kiss, yeah, everyone's making a bunch of noise, and they're both like, ah, like hiding in their little seats, um, and they were actually getting along really well until the kiss cam, and they got, like, awkward and stuff, and the mascots come to, like, get in their faces and stuff, and, like, trying to get, uh, the girl to kiss the mascot if he's not gonna kiss the, the, the guy and stuff, and the fucking mascot falls. It dies right there in front of everyone and on top of them. And so it's really traumatic. At the same time, uh, God is visiting his family in hopes that he can get his parents to uh, back Lazy Susans. And uh, God's parents live in this giant mansion. Um, and they're wonderful, you know, good people. And we meet his brother and sister. Now, Steve Buscemi, God, is the oldest of the people playing all these folks. Um, Like, we have Chris Parnell and Margaret Cho as his parents. And then Titus Burgess and uh, this little girl named uh, Ruby are playing his brother and sister, but they're older than him. Because they're like, you always coddle him because he's the baby. (laughs) And his siblings' worlds are going great. They have, you know, utopias. Everything's just perfect for them. Everything's going great. And he's, you know, thinking of ending his world. They're like, Mom, Dad, do you even know how Earth is doing? I'm like, no. Why don't we... we they make Steve Buscemi God talk about Earth. It's like, and th- there's not even anything in the middle. And he just forgot to build it and just filled it with fire. Like, there's nothing in there. They talk about, like, giraffes, which he keeps describing things as, like, dogs. Like, it's like a really big dog with a long neck kind of thing. Like, he's, like, explaining things as, like, different animals. It's just... Because, honestly, our world, when you describe it like that, is just... 
we're a weird planet. Um, and he eventually gets like, you know what? No, my fucking Earth is great. Because uh, the siblings make him go, tell mom and dad what you did to the humans. That he gave them free will. So apparently on these utopias, they didn't have free will. Only we do. And they're like, why would you do that? And he's like, you know what? I'm proud of my Earth. It is messy. It is weird. But you know what? It's mine. And I fucking love it and shit. And he's like, I'm going to go not blow it up. And they're like, you were going to blow up your world? And he's like, yeah. Don't pay attention. Don't pay attention to that. And he runs off. But... <laughs> There's so many things I've kind of like glossed over a lot of. It's a comedy show, so like some of it is only really funny, you know, in the moment. But I do like that God is illiterate, and they use that to get him to sign uh, a life extension for um, one of the humans, the boy. He's very close with his grandmother, and she has three days to live, and they have four days to get this boy to kiss this girl. And, and they have a date on the fourth day. So they're like, we need to keep this woman alive. <laughs> we cannot have him mourning his grandma. Probably, you know, not even in the, like, not even in the city would be leaving and stuff. And they get God to sign a life extension because he can't read. And they tell him it's a uh, liquor license for Lazy Susans. It's, it's a good, I like it. I like it a lot. To think that he made, you know, a world full of people and, like, reading is, like, a huge thing here and or, and he just can't. He's no idea. Uh, and they're, you know, trying to get this, uh, he's running home from his parents' meeting to stop the earth thing, um, they're having this terrible time. The mascot is dying on these humans' laps. Uh, and God comes in. And he's like, I want to end the thing. But the, the there's like a button to end the countdown and stuff. But he made it unopenable <laughs> until they kiss. So uh, he's not able to help. And everyone else, all the other angels, are finding new positions in different galaxies they're just partying and stuff. Uh, but these angels that are working to save the world are like, no, no, no. All right, guys, you all still work here for another hour. So you better, we are all going to work together to fucking save this planet. And so uh, the couple, after they left the game, they had this like, you probably want to go home. And I don't want to go home. Oh, it just seems like you did. I mean, if I only want to go home, if you want to go home, like... And they end up, like, having this weird misunderstanding and leaving. So now they're using everything in their power to get these guys back in the same space. Because they keep, they're walking away from each other. And they have, uh, like, an hour left. So if they are making it so uh, lights, poles fall in their way. They made, like, a mini tornado, kind of? Like, some kind of windstorm and got them to switch directions and stuff. They pushed the wind for so that he would... So that uh, one of the guys would walk towards his... One of his favorite restaurants instead of away from it. Because that was closer to her. And they, they figured out how to control insects and stuff. There was just a lot. But they finally got them to meet. They're, like, meeting, like, an apocalyptic scene because, like, the buildings are starting to fall around them. And they f fucking... They do it. They, they do, Spoilers, I guess. They do it. They kiss. Like, with three seconds left. And they're able to save the world. And everyone's really excited. It's so good. I'm so proud of them. Um, They do it. It's great. And the... Uh, uh, Craig... Daniel Radcliffe's angel and the main girl Eliza he's been like kind of crushing on her this whole time and he does this really brave thing in this uh which makes her go oh maybe he's you know not a complete bog watcher um and so I think I think they like start to get friendly I can't remember if they kiss or not they might kiss they might not 
I can't remember, but I do know they seem like they might be starting some kind of relationship. And I'm so proud of them. Um, and everybody's exciting. There's other characters, too. There's another um, girl, Rosie, who uh, is like, I guess she's more the assistant to God, but she's kind of offloaded most of her work to Sanjay once he got promoted. And it, like, shows her rise. Um where, like, there was a bunch of intaking human souls, and they were like, you can either do this, uh, go straight to heaven, or you could uh, sign up for this super elite project. And she does that, and she does a big training montage, which is really funny to watch, just to be God's personal assistant. It's really good. This show is so smart, so funny. Um, they have a little bit of more slapsticky humor, uh, but also a lot of episode-long setups for different situations, and it's it's very funny. Like I said, for the most part, the ending joke is that whatever they just did this episode did cause a lot of deaths on Earth, which gets a little old, but it's still, I mean, it's still funny. I had a great time watching it. I think it would probably be a little bit better not binging, maybe watching, like, two at a time and then, like, wait a day, uh... But I binged it. I ended up watching the whole season in one day. I didn't even realize it. I actually watched both. There's only two seasons out right now. And I watched both of them in one day. And it was just a bit shorter than I thought it was going to. And I just loved it. It just kept watching. It was all day. <laughs> um, so I, I would definitely recommend. It was really easy to watch. Um, I do think if you do break it up a little bit, maybe that end joke won't get so repetitive. And it is kind of funny with like in what way the things end up affecting them. It's really good. If you have not watched it, I would really recommend. It's very funny. Um, it's TBS. So wherever you can watch TBS is where you can watch this show. I had a blast. Steve Buscemi as a burnt out kind of failure god is just so funny. Uh, he plays it perfectly because he, he can give that stare of like, if you say one wrong thing, I will vaporize, or I will have you vaporized. Like, while well, at the same time being able to pull off that, I'm, I'm gonna say a really weird thing, and it's gonna come off completely natural. So I think Steve Buscemi was a really good choice. Originally, I, I, I read um, Owen Wilson was gonna be God. I think... Steve Buscemi was better for the role. I think they made a, a good decision uh, when Owen Wilson had to step down. Um, I mean, I'm sure the it, the character probably would have played a little bit differently. Like, it probably would have even been written differently if Owen Wilson was in was like in the role versus Steve Buscemi. They probably like rewrote some things to lean more towards his strengths. It would have been interesting to see Owen Wilson, but I really loved Steve Buscemi. Like, the marketing of just Steve Buscemi is God was enough to get me interested in the show. Even though I couldn't watch it at the time because I don't have, like, live television and stuff. The second I saw it on a streaming service and I was like, oh, fuck yeah. I just popped that baby on. I was like, Steve Buscemi's God. I gotta watch this. I would highly recommend this series it's very good but that's all i kind of have for you guys today please don't forget to donate uh down below to the innocence project we have links all the fun links down below um we thank you guys so much for hanging out with us this month we've got lots of stuff planned so please keep an eye out on socials for updates and exact times on everything uh i'm so excited about this charity month uh, please donate to the Innocence Project, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!